Well, if you ever doubted for a moment that the Citadel, our flagship theater, knows how to make an entrance, consider the play that opens Thursday on the Schachter stage. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf was the very first play that the Citadel ever did in 1965. It was especially picked by the theater's late great founding father, Joe Schachter, and it hasn't been back on a Citadel stage in 50 years, till now. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf is a landmark play in the history of the American theater, not least because it marked the arrival on the scene in 60s America of a new, startling, controversial voice in playwright Edward Albee. He'd written a couple of plays before Virginia Woolf, surreal comic nightmare type plays, <laughs> Um, but this was the play that rocketed him to notoriety and fame in 1962 with its blisteringly funny, ferocious portrait of a marital bloodbath as a three-hour marathon of bad behavior. It fractured the Pulitzer Committee so decisively that there was no Pulitzer Prize in drama in 1963. They just couldn't get it together. <laughs> and this is the remarkable thing. Two years later, it was on stage in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, 2,000 miles away, opening a a brand new theater in an ex Sally Ann Citadel, and there it was. It was an amazing, gutsy choice. As James McDonald, the director of the current production, points out, it was the it was controversial even for Broadway in 1962. It just shocked people with language, the sex, the violence of its sparring partners. It changed the theatrical landscape. And in Edmonton, it pretty much served notice that the Citadel would be a theater that would undertake plays for actual theater lovers. <laughs> in 2016, three-act, three-hour contemporary plays are a rarity. It's an age of short attention spans. So it's a, it's a big juicy evening of theater. It needs great acting. It leaves you reeling. I remember interviewing Albie in 2004 when another controversial two-year-old Albie play was opening at the Citadel, The Goat, about a man who fractures his family by falling in love and lust with Yes, a goat. Albie admitted he'd heard the words filthy and disgusting a lot in his time, and he had pretty amusing things to say about outrage and the limits of liberalism. The fact that the ruling party north of the border at that moment was still called the Liberal Party, he took to be part of the Canadian sense of humor. Virginia Woolf started in sensation. It remains uh, in the repertoire. It remains great because it's universal, says MacDonald. So it's a big, grand way to celebrate the big 5-0.